and more. Make sure you follow at Para Alpine on Twitter and on Instagram. And use that Facebook page, World Para Alpine Skiing, as well. So a few amendments, I believe, are being made to the course here. And the officials and the course setters have finalised what they're doing. We'll be able to resume the second run status that we are in. Now, apologies if you're just joining us. We've had some technical issues here in Zagreb. Welcome back to the Silziemi Mountain on day two of the World Para Alpine Skiing World Cup. We haven't been lying down on the job, we promise you. But uh, a technical glitch has meant that we maybe haven't covered everything for you so far. What you need to know is that we've only missed the one run. Uh, and Kelly Gallagher DNF'd after around about 30 seconds of her second run of the day. So this is the lady currently sat in third position. This is Mena Fitzpatrick. Paralympic Winter Games champion, Mena Fitzpatrick, we might note. Wonderful victory in South Korea in her debut games. Fitzpatrick chasing down. Melissa Perrine and the surprise of youngster Veronica Agner in the first run mean that the Paralympic champion has a lot of work to do here, but this is all build up towards the World Championships next week, of course. But some top stars, some Paralympic champions have joined us here in Zagreb to tackle this course. course that they've been enjoying. You think the athletes over the course of yesterday and this morning and their practice in there have certainly enjoyed it so far. Conditions, they say, are great. Patrick just getting a little out of shape towards the end, but 2.23.38 is the time as we hit the line. We wait for the confirmed time. And that comes through. 2.23.38. So, uh, it's Patrick gets across the line with two to come. And Melissa Perrine, one of those with Bobby Kelly. Mentioned this morning, they were in good spirits yesterday, looking forward to just getting out there and racing. Having been in Austria quite recently, certainly very different conditions across Europe, and yep, but everybody out there taking their time out to go skiing in this uh, period of the year, take their time and certainly look after themselves out there. And adverse weather in certain countries currently, but uh, Perrine is not taking her time through this course. The 68 gates being navigated by the Australian. Under that instruction, through the microphones and the helmets, Bobby and Melissa moving down steadily. Two medals from Pyeongchang for Perrine. Toast to the Australian team. And diving towards the line. Two fifteen ninety three. So Perrine leads by seven point four five seconds. Missed the first run. 
Don't blink here because Veronica Agner is exceptionally young, just 15 years old. And she was very, very quick this morning. Yuta Fakasova hasn't raced here on day one. She is here. She's trained both days, so whether she's picked up a little injury and wants to make sure that's right for the World Championships, I'm not sure, but she certainly hasn't raced today. And what they will be doing is keeping a, a close eye on this lady here. We always tend to find new athletes coming through at the end of each Paralympic cycle, whether it be summer or winter. Some retire. Some nations all find a new talent. Well, she is young. And maybe a little inexperienced there as she got off balance, but will this be good enough to maintain the work and the lead that she did this morning? It really should be. And this could be a World Cup victory on the debut for Veronica Agner. 209.13, the confirmed time. And Agner has ripped it up here in Zagreb. And has given herself the dream start. So there you see Gallagher with the DNF, meaning Fitzpatrick takes third. 223.38 for Great Britain's men of Fitzpatrick. Australia in second with Melissa Perrine to 15.93. Veronica Agner, though, in fantastic form. 6.80 seconds ahead of the rest. Victory for the 15-year-old Austrian, 209.13 the time. Still plenty of action to come here on day one. The women's standing event will be up in a matter of moments. Then we move into the three men's events. Just to reiterate, there are no women's sitting. As mentioned, the women's standing event. So there are just four left in this event as well. This is uh, Elena Krater from Switzerland. <laughs> 22 year old. Time in the first run, 120-22. Over 10 seconds back on the leader, Frédéric De Jong. Grata. Trying to make up some time with four in this. Chances of a medal here at the World Cups. Uh, high potential. Uh, 11th season competing, if you like. He uh, first took it up in 07 08, so that uh, picking up experience as she's gone along. And made it to a major event, though. So that would be the, the next stage, you feel. That uh, getting to the line. The time to be confirmed. 241 43 is what we have. On screen. That uh, looks on. 239.80 is the official time. 239.80 for Grata of Switzerland. This is Anna Maria Reda from Germany.
Just 18 years of age herself, all a lot of shape through this section and really driving in hard to these turns. And as those of you that race know, the harder you turn, the slower you will go, but uh, sometimes you have no choice but to make sure you get inside that gate. Course set by the Croatian Luka Dobronic. Right there. Again, just the single ski pole use in the right hand. Place finish in the giant slalom during those winter games. And Maria closes in on the final section. Should be inside Kratter's time. 235.74. So a guarantee of third place, a podium for Anna Maria Reda. Pink hat, pink helmet, I'm going to say, of Petra Smatova. Most experienced of the four. Three time Paralympian. Bronzes from both the 2010 and 2014 games. Two fifths and a sixth in Pyeongchang. Would have hurt a little bit. She chases the elusive gold, silvers from World Championships, and they go back to 2011. A similar story in the last World Championships, two fourth places and a fifth. Slalom is one of her strengths. That fifth in the Pyeongchang Games came from the slalom event. At the moment here in Zagreb, it's the battle between Smatova and Turgeon, but Smatova gets to the finish and sets a time for Turgeon to chase then. 228.26 for the Slovakian. Referee Tony McAllister looking on a moment ago. Smatova slides away and she'll know that only this lady can stop her. She's uh, taken to sitting in our commentary tent before the event. Not 100% sure why Frederick Turgeon has decided she's doing that, but it's been good to chat with her. We uh, discovered the uh, sad loss of her father earlier in the year. She said the, the way I'm dealing with it is just getting out there and skiing, so at least to the Turgeon family. Turgeon is uh, going exceptionally well here in Zagreb. Early run was 109 exactly, which was healthy and great lead. And she said that uh, she found it tough. She really enjoyed being out there in the practice, but she said he did find the run tough and it is a little icy in parts. So it's very much different to, to being back home in a uh, normal practice area. This course was giving her a, a chance to try other things and to go quick. And she'll have to, to take the victory. 223-84. And uh, the applause you can see from the rest of the 
outstanding athletes at the bottom. So Kratet starts us off, 239-80. Rida coming in in third on the podium, 235.74. Petra Smatova from Slovakia finishes in second position, 228.26 the official time. But it is Canada's Frédéric Turgeon who takes it in 222.34. Looking back up the mountain, you can see just at the top right-hand corner of your screen yeah, the men's VI category getting themselves ready. Somebody's lost some skis. Hoping that uh, Mac Marcoux would be competing in the men's VI category. A chance for us to see him and his new partner, a new guide. But he uh, didn't appear in this morning's start sheet. So uh, they're the names that did. But Agnoli setting the quickest of the times. 1 minute 0.73 for the Italian. Damien Mizdrak. Will be first to go though. The local skier also trying out a new guide, Rea Mikulic. Again, those of you taking in this World Cup action for the first time, maybe, maybe Paris Alpine skiing for the first time. The VI skiers range from uh, B1 to B3, those in the B1 classification, the lowest visual acuity. Those in the B3 have the highest. All those classifications are factored into the time. All of the skiers have one thing in common is that they have a guide to take them down. Communication through the headsets. Sometimes hear that on your TVs or tablets, however it is you're choosing to watch the action here from Zagreb. Thank you for joining us to do that. You should be able to hear some of the instructions as we go through the VI category. Trust me in the the difference between the guides and the athletes as Mezdrak goes across the line to 31.58. Some of them have their guides really far in front, some really close. Again, just depending on the level of their visibility. A steady run for Mezdrak. His official time. Combined with his second run, 231.50. Yeah, that second run, 117.01. Slower than his first run. Now here's Neil Simpson. Like uh, Veronica Eigner in the women's event. This is a debut World Cup for 16-year-old Neil Simpson. It's, uh, just approaching 5.30 in the evening back in... Great Britain, or more importantly up in Scotland where the Donald Skiers, where Simpson comes from, will be watching on, I'm sure. Oh, this is a, a battle for Simpson to get back up to the gate here. He's, uh, he's missed it, but he is showing some real determination here to make sure he gets a finish. I'm 
sure the Simpson fan club is screaming at the TV at the moment. But he's round and through. Normally, his uh, guide is his brother. Due to uh, academic importance, he uh, can't make it this time around, but teammate Jamie Robertson taking on the the role. Important it is as well. Again, just 16. Plenty of learning ahead for Neil. The instructions of left, right, left. And Simpson gets to the line, but he will be hugely upset. Be relieved to have got to the bottom. Nobody likes the uh, a DQ. And there it is. Just knew he'd gone wrong. Took a moment to think about it. And he thought, no, do you know what? I'm doing it. I'm getting back up there. And I'm going again. All part of the... Paralympic spirit. Well, from a 16-year-old to a 53-year-old. This is Gerno Morgenfurt. Morgenfurt, the oldest of the competitors here in Zagreb. Parasport is uh, not unique in Alpine to... Uh, have athletes in the high numbers. Moving foot has always been guided by Christoph Gmeiner. These two nearly bagged themselves an Olympic medal. In Pyeongchang, what a dream story that might have been. You are forgiven for thinking maybe that uh, Milgen Furt has been competing for a while. He certainly hasn't. Yeah. Pretty much his debut season last year. We saw a lot of him on the World Cup circuit. We saw him pick up his first World Cup medal. Got one here. Got the bronze behind uh, Franz Seven. Rakozhibov, as he comes through here, he'll be hoping to have added another. 2.13.5.0 does indeed mean that uh, third place is his. Areos starting from 102 after his first run. Look how quick these boys are. This is uh, Areos and uh, Maros Hudik, his guide. Years of trust and teamwork in these pair. Areos is a formidable opponent on any day. He's well known for attacking every course and can lead to problems. But, uh, certainly, Areos, gold medal winner in the Super Combine in Pyeongchang, bronze in the Super G. Shows you that he has the ability and the tenacity to take on any. of the mountains that face him. Jareos <laughs> will cross the line in 206.41. So Miroslav Jareos 206.41. That is the official time.
This is the early pace setter from run one, Bertagnoli, like Correos, not afraid to attack the course, and that's driven by Fabrizio Casal, the long-term school friend and guide for the young Italian. Raft of medals ready to his name, Dovizio Casal and uh, Giacomo Bertagnoli, 19 year old with the two world championships. The second, where he expected to start picking medals up on, there's a ski on the loose, and it's Fabrizio Casals. Well, guide stops play, if you like. Bertagnoli pumps out his fists in frustration. Just taking a look back, he really drives in there, Casal, and I think he knocks something loose. And out goes Bertagnoli. Well, Casal's ski leaves the boot and unceremoniously out go the Italian pair. A premature ending to the men's VI category. Send us your thoughts. Hashtag Zagreb 2019. Hashtag Para Alpine. Hashtag World Cup. Make sure you get in touch. Let us know on Twitter or Instagram at Para Alpine. You can follow us on Facebook as well. World Para Alpine Skiing. Taking a look at the results then. Miroslav Harreus picks up the victory from Murenfer. And Damir Mizdrak gets himself on the podium in a home World Cup. Neil Simpson, 250-21. Work to be done. He's just, just 16 and there's a lot of belief that he will be very, very good for Great Britain. Surprise for Giacomo Bertagnoli as he DNFs in odd circumstances in the second run. Still the men's standing and men's sitting events to come. Just the singular runner in the men's sitting event. We've had uh, a no start for Marcus Hvatterhofer. I can tell you that now. So it means that Jesper Pedersen will race on his own if he gets to the bottom. He's done all right. Two DNFs this morning in that category. Uh, guys, big congratulations. Super fast run down on the slopes. How does it feel to win? Oh, all right. No, we got to play the game. We got to play the game. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, the result was good. 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 The result Race, race is the first race is very good and slope, you know, very hard. And congratulations from from uh, our good. Oh, it's, not good. it's okay, guys. Congratulations on the win, Alan. We'll pass it back to you. Congrats, guys. Uh, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. That's okay, guys. That's not, fine. That's fine. You did good. Not, not only come. Grasto. Got uh, Leander Chris coming up as well in a few moments' time. So two debuts in a row. That's uh, Marcus Nilsson Grasto going across the line. Taking a look at the official time for Grasto in just a moment. I can tell you that that is uh, 2.28.62, his combined times for his efforts in a debut weekend 
Or debut event, should I say. Now, Leander Kress from Germany. Single leg skier. Oh, just getting a little out of shape, but managing to hold the line. And he hasn't missed any of the gates either, so that's good from Leander Kress. Seventeen-year-old comes from uh, Freiburg. He's had a crack at para canoeing in his young life as well. As far as uh, regional level for that one, he's aimed how to make it to the 2022 games. Again, just managing to pull himself up before he misses the gate but all of these little errors cost time and Chris into the final section then through the last blue gate and across the line 227 43 on the screen and you see there just fighting with the course So uh, 2.25.93, the official time given to Leander Kress. Since Tivide uh, Bendotti. Bendotti. Single leg skier. Right leg. Four-year-old from Cusson. Best was a 12th place in the slalom in Pyeongchang. This would be the third event for Ben Doty. Disappointed to only register 17th at the World Champs in Calabrissio in Italy a couple of years ago. I can see that uh, Dotti has improved. It's noticeable to me, I must admit, having seen Dotti over the last 18 months or so, A little wave to the camera, maybe even a smile from Davide Bendotti. 2.12.92 That's what's uh, registered on the screen. 2.11.53, the official time. This is James Whitley. Bib number 19. Again, no uh, ski poles in use for James Whitley due to his impairment. London born. Competed in Pyeongchang. Again, uh, similar to Bendotti, the slalom. Giving him his best result. He actually got uh, two tenth places, one in the downhill as well. And two eleventh in the Super Combined and Giant Slalom too. So, certainly knocking on the door of the top ten at the major international event. At the moment he's knocking the gate posts out of his way. Current leading time, 2.11.53 from Bendotti. Seven more to come after Whitley, though. 207.88 as he comes through the gate. So that time, 207.88. 
We uh, have no Theo Rimeau from Switzerland. So we move to our next competitor, which is uh, Spencer Wood of the United States of America. One year old from Pittsfield. Says he enjoys skiing because when he's on skis, couldn't tell that he was a power athlete. It's one of the major enjoyments for him. Only took up competitive skiing back in 2014 as a youngster. room to grow. 10186 was his first run. And Wood lunges down towards the line. 20478 is on the screen. If that's right, that's what will take him to the top of the standings. Waiting for that time to be confirmed. This is uh, Thomas Field. with a 101.22 from his first run. Still waiting to bring you the official time for Spencer Wood. Hopefully that will come through on our system in a couple of moments. Field. Making his way through nicely. two-year-old crossing the line 202.98 up on the screen and that puts him into first position Spencer Woods time was 204.78 so Peel's time 202.98 confirms him at the top of the leaderboard with four to come this is Robin Koosh Two Swiss athletes back to back in this second run. 20 year old from Neuchâtel. He has that impaired range of motion. Dreams to finish on the podium of a Paralympic Winter Games one day. Replicate that maybe of Uncle Didier, who took the silver at the 98 Winter Olympics in Nagano. It'd make a hell of a quiz question in years to come, wouldn't it? Balance a little. It's hard to regain it. 205.04 as he comes across the line. Shows that Kush has had a real struggle with his second run because that drops him down into third position. No real chance of a podium place from there. So it's still Peel from Wood with Wurtz 
Rassen and Walsh to come. See how windy it is up the top there. The uh, start banner to the left has been blown apart. Can Martin Wirtz blow apart the field and make it to number one position? He'll still have Olvarsson and Walsh to come after him. Martin Wirtz trademark attacking style from Wirtz. five-year-old yet to pick up a, a major event medal much to his annoyance Martin Wirtz Cross the line he goes 203.11. And if that's the correct time, that will put Wirtz in second here, which is going a long way to show us just how good Thomas Fields' second run really was. Two oh three zero one or two oh three one one. For Martin Wirtz, 202.98. Thomas Field will get at least third position here. Helma Rassen from Iceland. Up next, uh -huh. single leg skier. The young 18 year old. find a winning path field has gone from fifth to a minimum of third can he leapfrog another place here or has Olvarsson got what he needs Walsh's time was inside the minute this morning the line he goes down he goes as well 202 97 got to wait for a confirmed result here but that could be 0 0.01 inside in fact it's been recalculated 201 71 well in front of Thomas Phil so good stuff from Orvasson he goes to the top of the leaderboard We just one to come. A good, good second run for Rassen. 201.71 is the time to beat. Thomas Walsh. Walsh looking good in these early stages. 23 year old. Moving neatly through these 68 gates, real swift. Looking agile, Walsh through that section. Fifth in Pyeongchang in the slalom. Is he going to start the World Cup campaign with a victory? We've got to wait for the official time to come through. It's showing us 20291. And 20291 is exactly right. Well, Vassen will take the men's standing event then from Thomas Walsh. Vassen leapfrogging Walsh from the first run to the finish of the second 201 71 1.2 seconds ahead of Walsh 
Thomas Phil with a good performance, meaning he went from fifth to third in the final stages. 202.98 for Thomas Phil. And that's the top three for the men's standing event. Well, uh, Marcus Nelson Grasto and Leander Kress got us underway in that event, making their World Cup debuts. Just one event to come. So, uh, Pedersen and uh, meant to have Marcus Gratterhofer. So my understanding is that uh, Bib 29 was ruled out a little bit earlier on. So we uh, expect just Jesper Pedersen. This is indeed Jesper Pedersen. Went 102.97 earlier on. Oh, and Pedersen has to reach the bottom here. If Gatterhofer is indeed out. So Pedersen against the clock, realistically. Ever smiley Norwegian will just challenge himself no matter what. Medicine, the giant slalom gold medal winner from Pyeongchang. Really burst onto the scene last year. Very interesting tussles throughout the course of the season. The men's sit scheme was really entertaining last season. Kolovic having his abilities and uh, the shooter. But uh, across the line goes Pedersen. Kampschur, the, uh, the man to beat at times as well from the Netherlands and uh, Pedersen slides away and uh, as suspected Pedersen was indeed the only athlete to take part in the men's sitting so uh, that completes the racing well that concludes all of the action here on the mountain. Keep an eye out for at Para Alpine's Twitter and Instagram and also the Facebook page, World Para Alpine Skiing. Interviews were done with all of the winners, so it'll be good to catch up with what they had to say about the action here on the first day of the World Para Alpine Skiing World Cup. Make sure you join us in the morning tomorrow, nice and early for day number two. There's confirmation of Jesper Pedersen's victory, 208.06. See you all tomorrow.